Okay, so we're going to start with a simple pleated mask, um, which is two pieces of fabric that you cut out nine inch squares and put right side together. Here are some of the other supplies you need. Whoops, let me go back here. Okay. Um, you need some wire if you have it. Um, picture hanging wire works, as does cable, um, stereo cable wire which is really nice and what I've been using because it's coated. You can also use twist ties or um, wired ribbon. Um, and then you need some kind of thin elastic or rubber band, thick rubber bands or hair ties, bias binding if you're a sewer and you have that or right. just grow grain ribbon is also um, good to work with. So string might also work for your ties. So then you cut your two squares um, of nine inch fabric and you sew top and uh, two sides, opposite sides, you sew a seam. And then you put your, your um, wire up at the top in the center and you zigzag over it. So you gotta be careful there that you don't break your needle, which I do a lot these days. Um, and then you turn it inside out or turn it right side out so that you have, and then you press the top seam and the bottom seam and the open sides, you also press in a little bit so that you can sew down and you'll have a nice closed seam. Then what you're gonna do is take your elastic and stick it in here at the top and you're going to sew. You're going to zigzag back and you're going to straight stitch back and forth over that five or six times because it is very important that that's really sewed tightly. If you're gluing this or using things like um, seam tape, you can try it. I, hopefully they are strong enough. If you use a really strong glue, it might work. Um, but just know it might come apart if you're not actually sewing this. And so as you're going, you're going to sew. Okay, so that's next step, next slide. Sorry. So that's where I've been zigzagging, or I've been straight stitching back and forth. If you look right there in the corner, you can see a lot of little stitches. If you look on the PowerPoint, it's a little bit easier. And then as you're sewing down that open side, you are going to make some pleats and just sew over them. Probably two is, is good. Um, and then you sew along the other, the second side, insert your elastic for the second, the second edge and make the pleats going back the other way so that they're going in the same direction. And then you just stitch over across the last side to finish it off. And it really doesn't take much time at all um, once you get the hang of it. Um, and I don't know if anybody has any questions about those kind of masks. Here's another one. You, you want to try to avoid having this bunching. So this one probably is for a bigger head or it could use, um, more, more pleats. They're all reversible. So you can wear it, um, this way one day. I would only wear it the same way on a particular day. Don't go this side and then an hour later turn it around. Um, you want to wash it in between and very carefully take it off um, and put it in um, to be washed. You don't want to touch. Um, you want to touch um, with your hands and then touch your face because you could be transferring the virus. Um, so that's it on the easy mask. The, the fitted mask is just a little bit more complicated. Um, I have 
sent a PDF of the pattern that I used that has both the small, medium, and large sizes on it. And you can also email me to get it if you, if you um, didn't get that link. So after you cut, and the pattern does not include seam allowance. So when you cut these, you have to cut it bigger, a quarter inch all the way around, um, bigger than the pattern. Um, and then you sew along the curved edge first for both of your pattern pieces. And then you use a, a pin to pin at the top, the center seams, you want to match them up of the, the two sides. You always want to use different color, different fabrics so that you know which side you're wearing on a given day. If you use the same fabric, you're going to forget if you take it off um, and then you want to put it back on the same day, you're not going to know which side you should be putting next to your face. So you sew that top seam across that curve and then you turn it around and sew the opposite out. Oh, and then you can put your um, wire in or your ribbon. If you're using wire on either mask, three inches is about long enough. And um, for a wired ribbon, you want to cut it a little bit like two or three inches shorter than the length of the side that you're putting it on. Um, so it can be longer than the wire would be. Once you've zigzagged that in place, then you sew the opposite side straight and then you turn, turn the whole thing inside out, right side out and um, press it so that you can then top stitch. And again, you're going to fold the sides um, in to have a little seam allowance. And that's where you're going to put your, your elastic in and zigzag and backstitch three, four, five, six times to make sure that you get it included. Make one little pleat probably as you're sewing down that open side, put the other side of the elastic in, sew along the bottom put the next piece of elastic in and make the, the pleat on the other side. And then once you get up to the top and get that final piece of elastic in, you then top stitch all the way around the top, making sure that you don't sew over the wire because um, you'll break your needle again. Um, and that's it. So you have a fitted mask, um, and you, you don't want it to open up here. So this one fits me pretty good because I've made a little, I made a little um, pleat. Um, the large size fits men with larger heads. Um, they like seven inch elastic I've found, at least in my family. Um, my daughter, my 30 something daughters like the medium and maybe the small with six inch elastics. Um, I made then, I think on the next slide, maybe I have, yes, um, a different pattern I made for smaller masks for children. And those pictured ones are the smallest of the sizes that I made for my three-year-old granddaughter who has a really big head. And four-inch elastics didn't, were too tight for her, so I had to make more with five-inch elastics. So hopefully those will arrive tomorrow and, and fit her. Um, Anyway, I don't know if, any, and then on the next slide, I have those donation places for CSSA's partners. So, and anybody's welcome to email me at any time if you have questions. Um, and I don't know if you have questions now. Pam, can, can you send out the slides from the PowerPoint? Yes. Um, I. I don't know, one of you guys could send it, Pam? Yep, or... I can send it, absolutely. Yeah, send the PDFs and the yep. PowerPoint. Okay. 
I would suggest we could actually send that out to all of all the folks on the call, but then also um, out to staff, all staff. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a great idea. And Ruta, have you ever um, made these just with needle and thread, not a sewing machine? I have not, but I could if I really wanted to. Okay. Um, I try not to anymore just because I have arthritis in my hands. Yeah. Um, and it's just quicker with a sewing machine, but it certainly could be done by hand. Right, just take a little longer, obviously. Yeah, okay. I, the, none of these have a slit for putting in a third filter layer, um, just because I feel like using uh, tightly woven cotton is probably enough for us. I've been making the kind for the hospital for UH that does, and that's just a little bit more complicated um but if anybody wants those instructions i'm happy to share those too okay and then um shannon had asked what type of fabric is best 100 percent cotton that you would wash first because there's always chemicals in cottons um they treat them so it's best to get rid of all that sizing and stuff and then um uh, Quilter's cottons are really the best, but you can use sheets if you have old sheets um, or just old old cotton clothes that you want to get rid of or don't wear anymore. Okay, great. So you just want, and you can put a, like, like an, if you have an interfacing, an iron-on interfacing, you can put that in. Um, while you're sewing, but you don't, uh, as I said, I, I'm just not bothering. I made one set with like an extra layer of, of a cotton fabric, and I feel like it's just too heavy, and it's gonna kill my daughter in Virginia because it gets, just gets too hot there. So um, anyway. Okay. All right, does anyone else have any other questions for Ruta? Okay, and like Lisa said, I will go ahead and I'll send, um, we'll, we'll send the PowerPoint presentation with all the step-by-step -step to everybody. Cool. Okay, all right. Lisa Ramsey, I believe okay. you're up now with your no-so version. Okay, that was awesome. Can we all just like say thank you and thumb major props to Ruda for all the time she put into this, um, not only sewing her own for her family and, and hospitals, but putting this together for us. So. Thank you very much, Ruta, you're amazing. This will not be as amazing, um, just to give you a heads up for that. But I do wanna show for those uh, who are no sewers like myself, um, kind of a, what you can potentially do. Um, I'm gonna try to do this. I don't have a PowerPoint, I'm just gonna show you. So tell me if this doesn't work. Um, you're basically gonna need one um, bandana as such. I don't know how big this is. It's just, I just order bandana online. Um, it's all cotton, 100% cotton. Um, can you all see, kind of see this sort of? Yep. Um, so you, you take it as so, and you're going to fold it up about a third of the way. Oh, and the other, the other materials is really a coffee filter. It's just an added filter and then two hair ties. Okay, I, I don't ha have, have long hair, so I had to purchase hair ties as well. But if you have hair ties laying around, you could probably use those. Um, then you take the filter after you folded it up like a third, just layer it right here. Um, you're gonna fold it up one more time and then a third time. See, I can barely fold the long sew. Okay, so you do that. So you've got this with long, can you, yeah, you can see this. Then you take one of your hair ties and kind of scrunch up the one end, put it on, scrunch up, do the same thing on the other side. And then you're going to fold it back on itself kind of in thirds okay. with the hair ties on. And then once you get to this point, you're really just going to try to um, tuck the one end into the other end as best as you can, like so, so, get it, so, ha, ha. okay, and then um, just kind of manipulate it so you, the little, the hair ties are going to be at the end as such, and basically, voila, you have your mask. It worked. 
And the, the, what I've noticed, I mean, it stayed on for two seconds, but what I've noticed is, um, in full disclosure, uh, these hair ties are probably a little bit small for me, um, for my ears, or maybe it's my glasses, I don't know. So you might wanna, I just bought, I think they were just called medium. I'm not a hair tie expert, what can I say? So you might wanna explore if you, again, if you have some laying around, they're probably stretched out a little bit better, they might be better, but um, you might wanna kind of explore a little bit larger of a hair tie than this. Um, and that, that's basically it. I'm sure you can find additional um, instructions online at this point. There's probably a lot of information out there, but that just shows how easy it is for someone like me to put together a mask. So.